If you've been watching my reviews and riding footage recently, you may have noticed this around my neck. It's the Motocom M Plus and essentially it's a noise cancelling motorcycle intercom and headset. Honestly, it's one of my most used pieces of kit at the moment. I wear it on pretty much every ride. So in this video, I'm going to tell you all about the product. I'll show you what's in the box and then I'll tell you about the pros and cons of it in case you're thinking of buying one. But before we get started, a massive thank you to Motocom for supporting the channel by sponsoring this video and also sending out a couple of headsets for review. There are links in the description below to their website where you can buy one right away. So let's take a look in the box. You get a nicely made carrying case which is useful if you're off the bike and you want to stick it in your bag. Now the headset itself does feel nice and robust so I haven't been using the case that much but it is nice to have if you want to keep it in good nick. You also get a few different earbud and gel sizes to get a perfect fit and there are a couple of microphone options as well. If you're wearing a full face then there's a regular wired mic but for open face helmets there's a boom mic. Both of them require the microphone adapter which you can attach to your helmet with a choice of sticky pads. Lastly in the box there's a charging cable and a quick start guide. So for most of my riding I've been using the M Plus as a solo headset so you simply put the neck band around your neck, stick the earbuds in and slip your helmet over the top. Then you can just pair it with your phone for like crystal clear podcast and music audio which I really love to have on those long motorway rides. The noise cancelling feature really cuts down on the wind noise as well which is of course great for your ears and on the inside of the neck band here you've got a noise cancelling button that selects from five different levels. So that's great if you want to pipe in a little bit more environmental noise let's say you're at a busy junction but even in the highest noise cancelling setting I still find that you can hear plenty around you. It just really cuts down on that heavy bass that you get from wind noise and the road noise and it really reduces fatigue over long journeys. Now if you do want to use a microphone then like I say you've got to fit it into the helmet but once you've slipped it on it just snaps onto this magnetic connector here. So that of course means that you can connect to another headset for use as an intercom but also you can use it to take phone calls. Now not only can you connect it to your phone for audio but also to a bike if it has bluetooth connectivity. A lot of the bikes that I'm testing have this at the moment as well as my own bike the Triumph Trident and I absolutely love love having the ability to skip and pause and change volume and take phone calls right from the switch gear. Now it's by no means a necessity because you've got these great controls on the end of the neck band, these two twist knobs. There's a whole bunch of commands that does all the same stuff and they're easy to use even with motorcycle gloves on. But as I say, if your bike does have Bluetooth connectivity, it's a really neat user experience. In fact, the Bluetooth pairing is universal, so it should work with just about any device, just like a regular set of Bluetooth headphones. In terms of the more technical specs, Moticom quote about 25 hours of battery life which is plenty for me. I've been finding I need to charge it about once a week and I ride pretty much every day for a few hours at the moment. It's also IP67 rated so that means it's dust proof but also waterproof up to a meter so it will be fine if you drop it in a puddle for example. And I've been out a few times in the rain and had absolutely no problems to report. In terms of the intercom range, they're saying it'll do about 150 meters. So obviously that's enough if you're communicating with a passenger on the back. Should be enough for bike to bike as well if you're staying relatively close together. Now, because of COVID restrictions over the past few months, I haven't done a great deal of bike to bike testing, but I've been out a few times with my wife on the back and we've had absolutely no dropouts. The connection seems really stable. So on to the things that I really like about this product, the first being the noise cancelling feature. I absolutely love my regular Sony noise cancelling headphones. I wear them all the time and I've been waiting for something similar for on the bike. Now, not only does it protect your ears and I've found it to be generally better than most regular earplugs but also the fact that it brings all the environmental noise down means that you don't have to be maxing out your music or podcast to hear them or your intercom and not only is that better for your ears but also the quality of the sound because it's not absolutely hammering the speakers means that it just sounds super clear compared to traditional headsets I've tried. A big part of that as well is having the in-ear buds as opposed to the speakers mounted inside your helmet. They're super comfortable. I've done a few sort of five hour, six hour days with them. No problems whatsoever. The other great thing about the noise cancelling is the ability to turn it up. Like I say, if you're in urban traffic and feeling a bit uncomfortable, turn it up a bit and you'll get more sound from cars and traffic piped into your ears. But also, let's say you go into a petrol station, you don't want to take your helmet off, but you want to be able to hear the person behind the tilt, just max it up and you can hear them perfectly. And you can't say that for regular earplugs or motorcycle headsets. Now, another big thing for me, and this might not be true of everyone, but I've got like five or six helmets on the go 
some for reviews, but also sometimes because I'm making videos or taking photos, I like to have a lid that matches the bike that I'm on. So it might be an adventure helmet or a retro helmet or a more sporty modern helmet. Either way, I just slip this around my neck earphones in, helmet on, and it's super simple, no messing about to move it between helmets. Like I say, the battery life is good, the connection seems stable, it's waterproof, it's durable, it's robust, it seems well made, and at the moment, the price looks good too. They've currently got 20% off on their website, which makes it just shy of 200 quid, and that's really quite competitive when you look at similarly featured headsets. Now a couple of drawbacks to be aware of, although they are both solvable. The first being that if you're in the intercom mode and you're paired to someone else's headset, you're still gonna get their wind noise from their microphone in their helmet, so you still have to be careful with where you place that. Stuff like closing the vents on a full face lid can help to keep that wind noise down. And I guess with the boom mic for an open face helmet, you're limited to kind of lower speeds and urban environments. With a bit of fiddling with the mic position though, we managed to reduce that noise when I was trying it out with my wife, but you just need to be aware that it's not as quiet as when you're just using it as a music playing device. And to some extent, I think it has been primarily designed for like an urban environment, but that's a massive shame to me because where I get the most benefit out of it is on the motorway where it cuts down that really aggressive wind noise. I'm also way less likely to use like music and podcasts if I'm on a short local ride or if I'm out for a, a ride where I'm going a bit quicker on some twisties and I wanna hear the exhaust note. Honestly, it's just those long motorway slogs that I do quite a lot of for my YouTube work at the moment. And for me, just having something to listen to helps me stay kind of alert and focused and like I say I really want to protect my ears. The problem is with the device sitting around your neck at motorway speeds it can start to move around and slip off and it can become quite irritating to keep repositioning it. I tried a few things like passing these wires through a neck tube like a buff. It didn't really work and then I found the perfect solution. You see I'm pretty much always wearing a rucksack when I'm out biking to carry my cameras and stuff and so I bought some of these. It costs like a fiver and they're Velcro reusable zip ties that I bought on Amazon. Now most motorcycle rucksacks like this Krieger R15 have a bit of webbing on the strap. So two of these Velcro little cable tie things and you can attach the neck band to the straps here. You've still got access to the twist knobs and it just doesn't move at all. This is perfect and in a way, it's kind of more convenient because it's just attached to my bag. Now, obviously that's not much use if you don't wear a bag, but I spoke to Motocom about it and they said that they're looking at some kind of clip that holds it a bit more snug. But honestly, now that I've figured that out, it's like the ideal kind of headset, earplug, media solution all in one for me. The key thing is, you know, you get away from that situation when you've got a pair of earplugs in and then you've got a regular headset outside of that with the volume like absolutely cranked up and it usually just sounds terrible. <laughs> honestly, these sound just as good as any other decent headphones, like not motorcycling ones. And even at motorway speeds, I think the audio quality is exceptional. So so that wraps it up. Once again, thanks to Motocom for sponsoring this video. I'd also love to hear your questions down in the comments below and I'll try and get back to you. And if you're new here and you wanna see more videos like this, hit subscribe and I'll catch you next time.